In this guitar tutorial, we're having a look at the Forelle, or the Trout. And this is a piece by Franz Schubert, and it's quite an old piece. It's been written in the late uh, 18, early 19th century. And this is specifically arranged for guitar. So it's not actually a guitar piece, but we are going to play it on the guitar. Let's have a look at the tempo first. The tempo says gracefully with a measure of 110 crotchet beats per minute. So this is in between Andante and Allegro. And this is then a nice and easy, a nice and easy tempo, I would say. So don't rush because otherwise you're going to have trouble with the quaver notes as well in the piece. So take it easy and slow. The key signature has two accidentals. We have F sharp and C sharp. So we need to take close care of F sharp, which is the second fret, of the first string. And we also need to take care of the C sharp. And C sharp is right above that on the second string. But there's also another sharp in this piece in line two, which is G sharp. So we need to then also take care of playing the G sharp, which is the third string, first fret, right there. So we're going to have a movement like that, G sharp to A. Very important. The time signature is 4-4, four, four, so we're just going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. But we start with an anacrusis, meaning that we have a fourth beat that we start off and then we end with only three beats at the end. So be noteful of that anacrusis so that you don't get confused with your counting. So we're going to actually start on four. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. We have two voices in this piece as well. So we're going to have a voice that we strum with our thumb or our bass notes. And then we have a melody that we are going to strum again with our alternate fingering between index and middle. And we're first just going to focus on the top melody. This is very important because this is probably the first time that we're really going to start playing uh, multiple melodies like this that runs quickly. So we need to make sure that we know our melody line quite well and use the correct fingering. That's very, very important. So let's have a look at the melody there. Okay, so we start with the anacrusis on A, then we have D, third finger, F sharp, second finger, D again, A, third finger, now we have a scale-like passage, E, D, C sharp, very important, B open, A, then we have again A, F sharp, 2nd fret, 1st string, D, A, C sharp, B, C sharp, D. Now we're going to play that G sharp. So we're going to play G sharp followed by A. Then we have A, C sharp. Just move your 2nd finger down to the 2nd string. Quaver notes faster. A. D, C sharp again. Now we have G, E, C sharp, D. Then we have D, B, 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 easy part. D, D, followed by A. A, A, E, C sharp, D, D, C sharp, B, 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 D, C sharp, E. A, C sharp, D. It's not a tricky melody, but what makes it a little bit more tricky is the fact that we now are going to play with a, a little bit more sharps. So remember, the most difficult parts are usually around where the quavers are. So that would be in bars 1, 2, 3, bars 3, with that scale-like passage E, D, C sharp, B. Ending on A. And then we have a similar part that's a little bit more tricky because now we need to add the G sharp, which is in bar, which is in bar 7. We have reaching all the way back to the beginning on the third string. And then we have a little bit further. Next bar, C sharp. And then again in the third line, 
we've got C sharp, C sharp. We have C sharp, G, E, C sharp, D. The rest is quite easy, and then right there at the end again in line four, we have. So those are the parts that you need to focus on first while learning your melody. Adding the left hand uh, is not too bad, but we, are on, we, we need to move quite a lot. And we're going to move between all three top strings here. So we're going to move between E, A, and D. And we're going to start here on D. So we're going to have this A, two Ds play together. Now in between a D again. Now we move down to A. A, A. D's and D's. D again. Now E and C sharp. Remembering to move all the way back on the third string. And then we're going to play A. A. Sticking on A. Back to D. Back to A. D again. D, D, D still. Now back to A. So it's quite important to read your notes, to know the melody line quite well in order to fit in the bass notes comfortably. Use the right fingering. Please do not deviate from the fingers. If you deviate from the fingers and you start moving around, you are going to get quite confused when you try to put this uh, two voices together. Let's have a look at dynamics. So we're going to start with a mezzo piano. Now we have a crescendo in line three. Decrescendo. And a crescendo again. Decrescendo. So the whole piece is actually mezzo piano, with only in line three and line four that we have that crescendo, decrescendo part. So go louder and then go softer, like that in line three. And then go louder and go softer in line four. If you found this video helpful, please remember to subscribe to my channel and check out any other videos that might benefit you. Thanks for watching.